Remember when I said earlier, I've never seen so many cowards and black men in this business. I would have to put my brother Tyler Perry in that. And then we said, but did you pay her fairly? When you go and buy Tiffany Haddish a car, see if we remember the movie Cadillac Records, I'll keep buying you a car, but I won't give you what you're worth. It's real. Yeah. Like, the man looks too good to be true, he is. Barely a year ago, comedian and actress Monique shared more details about her highly publicized beef with some of Hollywood's biggest players, and it appears one of her closest friends in the industry, Tiffany Haddish, shares the same views as her. During an appearance on Turnout with T.S. Madison, Mo was asked about her years-long claims about being blackballed. Monique previously called out Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, and Lee Daniels, alleging they tarnished her career after she declined to participate in the Precious Awards campaign. You know, I, I think that when I first had to say, I've got to speak up and speak out. As it turns out, Haddish is also a victim of Tyler Perry, and you will be shocked to find out how the Medea creator has been treating Haddish following a notice of dismissal filed by the plaintiffs for a lawsuit involving allegations of molestation against Haddish and Aries Spears a few years back. The comedian painfully revealed how the suit cost her work, and even the people she called family, like Tyler Perry, turned her back on her. I lost everything. All my gigs gone. Really? Everything gone. But now that they've changed face, you know? I don't you feel know, like bro. You the Girls Trip star talked to TMZ about the aftermath of her and Spears being accused of having groomed and molested two then-minor siblings years ago in a lawsuit originally filed in Los Angeles Superior Court. Prior to this, Haddish had spoken out in response to the child sexual abuse lawsuit that was filed against her and Spears. I know people have a bunch of questions, I get it, I'm right there with you, Haddish wrote on Instagram. Unfortunately, because there is an ongoing legal case, there's very little that I can say right now. But clearly, while this sketch was intended to be comedic, it wasn't funny at all, and I deeply regret having agreed to act in it. I really look forward to being able to share a lot more about this situation as soon as I can. Amid all this drama, Perry, through his studios, didn't do anything to help Haddish, despite the fact the accusations against her were false. In fact, all she tried doing in the lead up to the case was trying to make the world a better place. Filed by an anonymous woman, the lawsuit alleged that Haddish and Spears exploited Jane Doe, now 24, and her brother John Doe, now 16, in two comedy sketches filmed when they were children. In one clip titled, Through a Pedophile's Eyes, Spears' character plays a pedophile lusting after John Doe, who was seven years old at the time, according to the lawsuit. Haddish plays the boy's mother, who leaves her child with the man. According to the Daily Beast, John Doe spends most of the video clad only in his underwear as Spears' character leers at him through two holes cut into a newspaper he pretends to read. During the sketch, the camera zooms in suggestively on the seven-year-old's buttocks and crotch while he plays. Spears sprays baby oil onto the child's back and massages it into his shoulders in one scene, and at another point, the child plays with a train in a manner that suggests phallic masturbation. In another sequence, Spears smokes a cigarette while observing the child nude in a bathtub and pours water on his feet. The video ends with text that reads, Watch who you leave your kids with. Funny or Die, where Spears originally uploaded the video, removed the clip in 2018. Following this legal dwell based on her reputation, Haddish lost everything, absolutely everything. I, ain't no, I don't have no job. It is also this time that Monique intensified speaking out against Tyler Perry and his studio and how he takes advantage of black actors, Tiffany Haddish included. Oftentimes when it comes to a black woman speaking up and speaking out, it goes unheard until she dies. During one of her many interviews, Monique looked directly into the camera and broke down Hollywood's history of targeting black women who aren't afraid to stand up for themselves. Oftentimes, when it comes to a black woman speaking up and speaking out, it goes unheard until she dies. Then once she dies, then we go back and say, well, she was right and let's make a movie about it, she explained. See, I can give you their names, Eartha Kitt. I can give you their names, Hazel Scott. I can give you their names, Fannie Lou Hamer. I can give you their names, Hattie McDaniel. All of those women took a stand, and all of those women left here heartbroken, unhealthy, looking at a community saying, y'all know I'm right, 
but why won't anybody say anything? Mo was clearly targeting Perry here, given how the billionaire film producer treated her and Haddish. The beef between Monique and Perry stems from her refusal to promote Precious, which was not in her contract to do. Her role earned her the award for Best Supporting Actress at the 2009 Oscars. Mo revealed that she refused to campaign for a couple of reasons. First, she wasn't going to sacrifice family time for festivals and press junkets, and second, she wasn't contractually obligated to do so. She explained she agreed to star in the Lee-directed Precious for just $50,000 because it was a small independent movie. However, after the project received rave reviews at the Sundance Film Festival, Terry and Oprah signed on as executive producers, which gave the movie a significant boost. So when it came time for the campaigning of this award for the Oscar, and when it came time to go to different festivals, Monique said the team behind Precious urged her to campaign for the film, but she made it clear she wouldn't do it for free. Yes, Tyler Perry expected her to work for free. What I was not going to do was to make Hollywood the priority, she said, before recalling her and Perry's conversation at the Neighborhood Awards. I said to Perry, I'm not in the business of working for free. So we had a mutual agreement. No problem. We got up, we hugged, everything was good. When they knew that I was not going to be the actress or be the one that said, because it's them, I gotta do it. No, I don't care who it is. Now comes the black ball. Why are you trying to tell me to do something that I'm not contractually obligated to do? Monique said she began hearing reports that she was difficult to work with, and Perry even went so far as to badmouth her to director David E. Talbert. Though she said she never heard Oprah say anything bad about her, she pointed out that that media mogul chose to stay silent throughout the ordeal. However, she insists she currently has no hate for Perry, Oprah, or Lee. Let me be clear, I love those people, we love those people, my husband and I love them. They're our brothers and sisters, she said. And as my husband always says, Mama, we ain't calling nobody out, we're simply calling them up to say, listen, let's make our community better by making it right not running and hiding by what you consider is your power. Back to Haddish, after months of trying to save her career, the case against her was thrown out and she is slowly but surely getting her groove back. One fan tweeted, I see Tiffany Haddish is slowly making her way back into the spotlight. With another writing, it's weird how Tiffany Haddish low-key got canceled and then bounced back with a Disney movie. Disney is perverted as F, but it still doesn't add up. Monique and Haddish aren't the only people who have worked with Perry and complained about how he treats people. Back in 2018, the film producer faced the wrath of the Actors' Equity Association, a union of mostly black actors in Hollywood. You can't get mad at your mama because she getting that Similac with vitamin D. <laughs> According to the reports, Perry was gearing up for his 11th play, Medea's Farewell. For the production, Perry was looking to hire five non-union roles, but that thought flew in the face of Actors' Equity, which represents its members by, as its website states, negotiating wages, improving working conditions, and providing a wide range of benefits, including health and pension plans. Don't run from the police, it never pays. Although I run every dance, I get live on stage. Madea on the run. Back in 2015, the same actors union boycotted Perry and his production Medea on the run after Perry and the producers never signed a union contract with Actors' Equity. As a result, the union forbade its members from working on the production or risking disciplinary action. Equity also put Perry on its do not work list and hasn't removed him from that list to this day. Do you still think all this is a mere coincidence? Well, I don't think so. And that's not all about Tyler Perry Studios. Perry's production studio was at the center of a 2008 unfair labor practice complaint by the Writers Guild of America West after the actor fired four black writers who worked on his TV comedy House of Pain. It is reported that the firings were because the writers were looking for union representation. Perry also allegedly didn't sign a workers' guide contract that would provide writers with pensions and health care plans. At the time, his attorney said the firings were about the writers' quality of their work, not because of labor union contracts. Replying to a post suggesting Tyler Perry is humble despite being a billionaire, one grunted person took to Twitter writing, billionaires should not exist, and Tyler Perry does not support unionized workers. Who gives AAF about the fake humility posts? With another person, 
Larson adding, if Tyler Perry was forced to pay his workers a percentage of the profits instead of a fixed amount, how would that hurt anyone? So, Monique and Haddish's cases are not isolated. Perry is a known workers abuser in the film industry, and to make it worse, he always acts like a saint after all is said and done. Guess what he did with Haddish? Perry went around preaching how he had helped Haddish get out of bankruptcy after her case was thrown out. Is that how you look out for someone you claim to care about? I honestly don't think so. What about you? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.